no skinny damage to it. That's why I'm kind of holding it with the circle. So my fingers are literally doing this, right? Index finger is out of the way. I'm staring well clear of that cone and my, my hand hasn't even moved close to it. And I have some pretty big meaty paws. So it's, <clears throat> it's completely okay um, to use. And then I have, I have pretty positive control of the weapon as well. So then you're just gonna reload it. You know, you can talk and reload it out of a box or whatever the situation may be. And then when you go to close it, support hand up, close it, rotate, and you are right there, ready to fire. Now when shooting a revolver, try and keep your hand clear right here. There's gonna be a lot of excess hot gas that escapes from around your cylinder. If you can, please look up revolver firing videos and you wanna avoid keeping your hand here. If you put it here, you'll be absolutely fine. Even if you put it here, or you know you, you find that you wanna rest it up against that trigger guard, you're not going to hit anything, but right here, you're going to have some problems. So think about it. Just put it up against the trigger guard. I kind of put it in between uh, this joint right here and that first knuckle, right? Almost like that. That's just what works for me. Um, I know I'm going to get a ton of comments, call me a FUD and everything else, but hey, man, um, I shoot pretty all right. So uh, that that works for me, and it could probably work for you too. I'm not I'm not going to overcomplicate things. And then just point and shoot. And remember, if you don't break any of those four fire items, you'll have a great time. And then so next we're going to talk about our auto reloader, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, and it is in fact clear, verified with a finger check. Um, so. The way that you're going to want to do this is you should, well, you'll be handed a weapon much like this. Maybe. Pull the slide to the rear all the way and push up on the slide stop, right? It's usually the lever that moves into the path of travel of the slide and it's going to lock it to the rear. And then you're going to look down and you're going to visually verify the chamber. And if you can, go ahead and put your finger in there as well to make sure that there's no ammunition present. And this weapon is, in fact, clear. <clears throat> right so I feel like it's very important to explain this there are three weapons conditions for one of these at least in military lingo right so condition four is slide forward no magazine inserted no round in chamber safety on if applicable right? so this weapon would be in condition four condition three would have a magazine inserted slide forward no round in chamber safety on if applicable condition one after your magazine is inserted you will pull the slide to the rear let it go let it have that full range of travel and you'll have magazine inserted round in chamber slide forward safety on that's going to be your weapons condition four or correction one weapons condition one and the the way what i really want to talk about is when the way that these weapons work, right? I feel like it's very important to understand how they work when you go to shoot them. So you'll, you'll point out, squeeze the trigger, boom. The striker is gonna move forward, striking the primer. The primer is going to ignite the propellant, which is gonna unseat the round from the cartridge, building pressure in the chamber, forcing it out the barrel. Now, as this is happening, your slide is gonna unlock extract pull it back eject new round comes up out of the magazine it's, this is now the feeding process it cooks over the extractor it moves forward because of the rate of the recoil spring and then it locks inside of the barrel and then you want to release that trigger so when you're shooting an auto loading pistol you want to hold that trigger to the rear so that you can feel that sear reset in between shots and that if you do that it'll let you know that you're not slapping the trigger which would look something like this right but in reality when you're shooting it's going to look more like this right it's a very quick jerky trigger pull and if you hold the trigger to the rear slide's going to cycle let it go forward and you're going to hear an audible click that audible click is gonna tell you that you are using proper trigger control. 
Now, another thing I want to talk about is where to put your finger on the trigger when you go to shoot. So, you will have to have a you want to split the trigger on that front pad. All right, so you want to put it right there. So it should look like this. Pad right in the middle of that front digit on your finger, and you're going to aim and squeeze, hold that trigger, hold that trigger, hold that trigger. It's going to go through the whole firing sequence on its own and go forward, right? It's follow through. It's just like golf you, or baseball or anything else. You have to have a follow through. So let that trigger come forward until you feel that series setting. Again, even with different sights, <clears throat> equal height, equal light, front sight level with the rear, equal amount of space on both sides. And where you want to aim is you want to put that dot right about where you want to hit. So they say to aim under it, but it is ever so slightly under it. I mean, if you're aiming for right here, you want to be actually putting your sights right here. I mean, the amount that you're aiming under it is so minuscule. There's such a small amount, especially when you're shooting at a person-sized target, that um, you, you're really not aiming that much under it. So I'm going to say just go ahead and, and put it on what you want to hit. And squeeze the trigger. Don't dirt it. Squeeze. Feel that reset in between rounds. That's very, very important. If you don't do that, you're not going to get good rounds on paper. You're not going to get good groups. And then when you're choosing a target, right, you want to right, so something like this is absolutely wonderful. I'll turn it down. Something like this is absolutely wonderful. Right? This, again, if you've watched my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of T-Rex arms. This is from them. It's their chameleon line. It's great stuff. Um, <clears throat> but what it does is it has a very large target to be shooting at, right? The bullseye is fairly large, and then it actually is a very accurate representation, too, if you're training somebody of where you want to be aiming to neutralize a threat, right? Your, your three zones, right? Your center mass, and you have your pelvic girdle, and then you have your head and your spine or your windpipe. Right? Very, very accurate, very realistic target. And the other reason why the chameleon line is your brain is going to learn um, the targets that you train on. And then if you actually get into your OODA loop or whatever it is you, that you actually want to call it, your brain's going to start looking for key pieces that you've trained against, right? So like that one of the, the big guy with the perfectly round head holding a revolver out, it's going to subconsciously start looking for that. These come and they're all random, right? So they're computer generated images based off of some people that these guys have hired they have different weapons. Some of them have body armor. Some of them are wearing ski masks. Some of them are carrying baseball bats, knives, um, assault weapons, automatic weapons, handguns, revolvers, shotguns, every different type of weapon you can possibly think of. And they'll even give you an option if you want unarmed ones as well. So target choice is very important too. And then let's talk about ammo. So your magazine changes in reality are going to be just as important as your shooting. However, for your, for your first time learning, 